You're listening to the First Fight Podcast, home of the people and stories behind the fight. I'm Jennifer Anderson, the host and creator. My goal is to give you a peek into the remarkable world of fighting and create a platform for fighters to tell their stories. In each episode of this series, a different fighter shares a transformative story of their first time. On this episode, I sit down with women's MMA pioneer, Caitlin Young. She tells us about her first MMA fight, her plans for creating a positive culture at her new gym, and what she thinks about the state of women's MMA. Well, thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. Yeah, obviously, you've been, you've been at it for a long time. It's, I can't believe you're, we're like the same age. You, you're actually a little younger than me and you I feel like oh, really? you've been around forever <laughs> yeah I I've been competing like 20 years it's a long time it's crazy I mean you look at the list of people you fought it's like a who's who of women's MMA so it's pretty cool to have someone who's who's been around from the start for the most part oh thanks so you obviously have a lot of different first fights as we discussed, but why don't yeah. you tell me about your first MMA fight? Because MMA is it's a little more raw than anything else, I think. So I had, uh, when I had originally started training at the academy, I only wanted to tie box. And it was really hard. Still, it's really hard to get um, tie boxing fights for women um, on the pro level. So when I, I had won the, uh, it was, do you know the Thai Boxing Association, the TBA tournament every mm-hmm. year? It's a really big tournament. Yep. Um, I had just won the, the very first one, I won it in June. And then we decided I was going to start fighting MMA in the fall. So I trained jujitsu like for two months and then took an MMA fight. And uh, it was my first pro fight too. So that was super exciting. Um, but... I remember it just being such bullshit. They wanted to put us on the main card, which that's fine. But because a female fight was a draw. Yeah. Uh, however, it was still at the time that they didn't let women fight five minute rounds. So they said, you're too inexperienced. To hit. And I, you know, kind of made us think about it. And they said, well, it's because you guys are inexperienced. Cause she was, I think, one to know. I was all to know in MMA and, they said, but uh, you're going to be, you know, on the main card for the fact that a female fight is a draw. And it. I just remember being super irritated about that, the short rounds. But then I went out and I felt really good. It felt amazing to hit somebody with little MMA gloves after having to wear those big poofy tie boxing amateur gloves. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had come from Taekwondo Thai boxing and having this vision in my mind about what like a knee to the face is going to do to somebody because they teach you in your one step self defense that you need somebody in the face you know even if it's a big guy people can't take it they're done their nose is broken they're done and that is not what happens actually some people it is but this woman I need her in the face probably square like five times and she just kept fighting Mm -hmm. she didn't even end up stopping so she had sort of a verbal submission to low kicks she didn't care about getting hit in the face at all so um the first round was really dominant I wasn't sure going into it how it was going to be because she had had fight you know an MMA fight before and I hadn't had any um but then going out to the second round we would like raise our hands like we were going to touch gloves and she swatted my hand down and punched me right in the mouth (laughs) so all bets are um, off (laughs) right exactly (laughs) And yeah, it ended in the second round by her, you know, like verbally submitting to being kicked, oddly enough. And then afterward, there's one point in the fight where she was on her back and I was kicking her legs and my mom like scolded me for it afterward because she said I was being too mean in a fight. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous thing. Um, But yeah, that was it. It was pretty interesting. And then immediately after that fight, I got invited to go to this rising stars tournament that ended up being a hook and shoot tournament okay which we've all heard about that's amazing good stuff back then yeah 
Yeah, I'd love to fight more than once in a day. I don't know. I think it would. Every you know, time really... I'm done with the fight, I feel like I want to fight again. <laughs> right. Well, and the cool thing, like, you get your nerves kind of out in the first one. Yeah. So yeah. then you can just just go after that. It feels so much more relaxing, I guess. As relaxing as fighting gets. Yeah, I, I get really nervous. So I feel like once it's over with, I'm, like, ready to to really do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always take them out. Yeah, exactly. So after your first MMA fight, were you set on continuing to do it? I know you've always been more into Thai boxing, Muay Thai, mm-hmm. or you just yeah. going back. I, I mean, honestly, I would still prefer to do just Thai boxing if I could. I like MMA, but um, no, I wasn't set on it. I, I was excited because I knew I'd be able to get fights, but it wasn't that. MMA in and of itself though I did love the pace of it because it starts super fast compared to Thai boxing and I liked um that those clubs were so small and that you could do anything um but then later like way later in my career I ended up fighting in Thailand Thai boxing and the gloves aren't that much bigger <laughs> yeah just here we wear big gloves but over there they had little they're six ounce gloves that have been pounded down they're not brand new so But yeah, it was very, it was a lot of fun. And like you had said, it's just a little bit more raw and you get to see like, does this really work? All of these martial arts I've been training since I was 14 years old, do they really work? And sometimes the answer is no. You know, sometimes it's not what you think it's going to look like on somebody. And you learn one thing that my, one of my first instructors ever told me, and this is super accurate, is that people are like boards some break easier than others. You know, if you ever do like board breaks for your testing and it's a hundred percent true. And you know, this from fighting too. Sometimes you'll hit somebody with something that it's so hard. It like hurts your own hand or your own leg and they just walk through it. And then other times you'll like, feels like you barely touch somebody and puts them out. So, you know, it's like, you can't, it's hard to, to do this, but you can't be waiting for results you know absolutely or like some people are just admiring your work yeah yeah some people can just take a beating it's amazing I I thought that my first fight too like people are harder to hurt than I thought (laughs) I remember Uh just punching this girl like why isn't she quitting (laughs) and that's the thought I had too like this person's my same size this isn't a 215 pound guy like attacking me on the street, you know, it's hard to make somebody stop. Adrenaline's a hell of a drug, you know? Oh yeah. Man. Some people Um, are dumb, tough. I like to say. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. So, um, it was fun though. I mean, it was really eye opening and just very, very exciting to get in and and get to try that stuff. I'm amazed such a, I I don't know. You might not agree, but there's so many different elements to MMA. It's like other martial arts, you can kind of compartmentalize it and just focus mm-hmm. on it. You know, in MMA, there's, you could be a good striker, you could be a good grappler, but you might not be good at the transition or yeah. the fight IQ or, you know, like I always say, Mighty Mouse, he's like the best at that. He's good at transitioning, but I know it. it's such a hard part of it. That's what I struggled with MMA, like the transition between the two. When you see that, right, even in striking, you've seen people fight where they're just boxing or they're just kicking. And even at different points in the fight, they'll just, they're just boxing or they're just kicking or or whatever. And it's like the same, I think the same thing can happen to us in MMA sometimes. Oh, we're striking now. Oh, we're grappling now. Instead of, like you said, it's a game of transitions. Was there a time where you felt like that kind of clicked for you? Uh, I think it's... It it just sort of depends on the fight. I think when you're in the flow state, when you get those fights where you're just on, it absolutely feels like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say like a definite point in time. So you fought Pam Sorensen most recently, right? Yeah, twice. Yeah. Now, are you guys friends? I mean, you're both from Minnesota. You're from different Yeah, we're friendly. You know, she, uh, 
she's been around for a minute now too actually but yeah, yeah. she has been at the cellar and we are I, you know I was at the academy originally now I'm at striking institute our new gym but um our two gyms have been bumping into each other consistently over the years and I've actually had um, a lot of her coaches in my corner when I was fighting for like the U.S. team for kickboxing yeah. and stuff too so yeah it was I was excited when you guys fought I've kind of followed both of you and it was cool to see that come together like that it should have been in Minnesota I know. should have been in Minnesota <laughs> man I this is good good we'll have to run it back yeah the, I mean our and I don't know anything about like the the culture there with between gyms but do you work well together between the two or is it more of a rivalry um I wouldn't say it's a rivalry well I'm not at the academy anymore but I wouldn't say it's like a rivalry in uh because we do cross over in a sense like we've trained together when there have been like camps we'll occasionally go to each other's seminars and stuff mm -hmm. but there's not like Minneapolis is there's not a lot of cross training is Jersey like that the Jersey's different in the sense that there's so many more gyms sure in the Tri state area and everyone works with a, a fi their affiliates it's like case by case basis you know like my husband yeah. he'll he'll bring in people he's brought in people from other gyms because he's a high level guy that needs yeah big guys so yep. some gyms that are outside the affiliate will be able to come train it, it just it varies. And for girls, you know, it varies too. It's hard because there's not a lot of women and you end up like knowing everyone that you'll fight. <laughs> so of course, kind of hard. you competed against them in grappling here or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, it was really interesting seeing LA and the, the way Vegas is too, where people move around a lot because here it's very, people kind of stick to their place. So we're hoping to change that too because we have same we have a couple big guys and they're good training partners for each other but it's um like they're fighting in glory so if they can get in with a guy who's maybe an mma fighter the chances of them ever fighting each other are slim to none um mm -hmm. but they can still be really good training partners for each mm -hmm. other so i think there's a lot of value in that especially if it's gyms where you know there's a mutual respect and mm -hmm. and um it can be a super helpful thing i think it's good i mean I think it's changing now, but Milwaukee, there was only one gym for so long, you know, and mm -hmm. now there's actually a handful, which is great. Um, and Jake seems to be doing well and growing there as yeah. well. And like other gyms. Is that where you were? Were you at his gym? I was at Rufus Sport. Um, okay, that's what I, I thought. I started there. Okay. And I trained it with Jake a little bit before I moved, but... Um, yeah, like when I started, it was just Rufus Sport, you know. Sure. And, um, yeah. I love seeing that. Like other gyms have gotten people in the the UFC. I was actually just talking with Montel Jackson, who fights with Jake, and uh, he's great. And we were just saying how nice the contender is that it like, highlights talent that might not have had that opportunity to to get in the yeah. UFC, which has been good. Well, it's sort of like rising tide raises all ships when you've got other good gyms to sort of sharpen yourself against right in the, mm -hmm. the nearby area it's so helpful you know I think that's part of the reason like the the kickboxing and Muay Thai scene has done so well here is there have been a few gyms that have some really serious competitors so they're um they're helping build each other to the point that they're going and winning in Max Muay Thai and glory overseas you know um all these places and uh they're just really it's just really good for everybody i was really impressed with the academy and having two big gyms because we i'm not used to that but then when i came out here in jersey i think it's definitely better to have that mixing mm. around more there's just so much more that you can do instead of like you know having this mentality that no, no one else can succeed. I, I love yeah. the abundance mentality that ever, there's enough for everyone. And well, and, yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're right. Or people sort of have an idea that I don't know what it is like, uh, like they're up 
here and they want to stay there, but they they don't want to stay above everybody because they're pushing themselves. It's like they just want to make sure other people don't get better. It's a weird yeah. It's a weird thing, and I not not really healthy and not really productive. So, you starting your own gym. I I like that. First of all, that there's we need more women that own gyms. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you gonna do to like foster that positive culture? Um, you know, a few things. I want to have. Um, specific sparring <laughs> once we're all allowed to touch each other again yeah. um I would like to have specific sparring days so where for example in, if you're walking under 200 pounds you don't spar that day it's only for 200 plus so mm-hmm. you know people fight in around 185 and bigger um and then also do one for the way lighter people people walking under 140 sometimes have a tough time getting like good rounds in mm-hmm. where they don't you know, same with the big guys. Big guys run into a lot of them learn really good control because all their partners are smaller, mm-hmm. but they don't have a lot of days where they can just let stuff fly. And if it lands a little heavy, ooh, it's okay. It's not going to blow somebody's ACL, which, mm-hmm. you know, is the case for them when they're in with a regu- regular class or they end up with just one partner, you know, having a room full where they can move around. So we intend to invite some of the local gyms and even some from out of state that we're just friendly with to come up for sparring days for those things. Same with the smaller people, you know, one really unfortunate effect of uh, being smaller that I've seen happen is they'll almost have to back off their speed because if they start going really fast, the bigger person will get frustrated and hit them harder. A lot of people, and you know this probably from sparring, they don't yet know how to go fast without putting weight on it. And so these poor lighter fight, you know, we've got a 110 pound woman. She's killer, but she, like you watch her and, and a lot of her rounds, she'll almost have to back it off to protect the person's ego. So she doesn't get smashed, you yeah. know? Um, so I think it's really good for people on that end too, to be able to have some rounds where they can kind of let it fly and not have to worry about protecting egos and, enjoy themselves you know no I was literally just talking about that with my husband because he's a he's a big guy he's Mm -hmm. like heavyweight so and he they all like to go hard and his coach is always freaking out about them being so big going so hard with little gloves he always tells them go lighter go lighter and then when they go light they go too slow he's like we can't go let we can't go light and fast (laughs) he's like (laughs) hard and fast. Well, it's hard when like, your limb well, weighs like 75 pounds. <laughs> sure, once you get it going, it's just going. That's a whole different game. But that's why they don't spar with little people. <laughs> huh. I think it's okay sometimes, but you know, just naturally, like competitive people, when they're getting closer to fights and there's like a little anxiety about things, you know, they, they have to have some days where they can, yeah, they can turn it up. So uh, us mediums always always tend to get like decent rounds because there's somebody who can go with you. But I think on yeah. either end of the spectrum, you know, that's more difficult. Um, we also are, we're gonna have some smoker fights and stuff, which I think hopefully um, we'll get our ring in. We got a ring coming. Those will be really helpful because I think it's probably gonna be some time until we start having full blown fights. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, hopefully doing some smokers and. We want to also help foster the um, judging and referee clinics, like having people over that and seminars. You know, it's it, it's great if you're going to ref, but it, and then we also, when we do actual shows, we have more people to choose from, so we're not scrambling or flying somebody from Texas. Nothing against the guys in Texas; they're great, but it's expensive for the yeah. show. Where if we have some, if we can get some experienced refs and judges in Minnesota, it'll be all the more helpful. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff we have cooking. I'm pretty excited to get cracking on, but hoping it'll not just benefit our gym, but the whole community around here. Yeah. I mean, I love what you're doing for the sport in general. You're definitely one of those people that really lives the lifestyle and you're always, I just see, you're always like writing or you're matchmaking, you're fighting, you're coaching, cornering, like you're living that life and you're always kind of spreading the knowledge and pushing the sport further, which 
is really cool and admirable. You don't see a lot of people that really are giving back to it that much. So. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I like seeing it. I feel super fortunate to, to have had the opportunity to do that stuff sort of, uh, fallen into my lap, I guess, you know, I never thought I'd be blogging or I never thought I'd be matchmaking in the first place, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest, but there's a lot of magic that can happen if you just say yes and give stuff a try. So it's been really, really cool to, I guess, be able to d stay in the same, same area with combat sports, but be able to diversify. So thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, it's such a niche little, it's a little world, you know, like right. you end up doing everything somehow at one point in time, which is cool. And it's such a specific role, you know, that you won't meet a lot of people on the street that have that knowledge. <laughs> so you have all that knowledge and it'll be cool because it, it, I'm not going to say easy, but it'll come naturally for you to eventually be promoting and coaching. It all kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. It's like different sides of the, it's like different views of the same thing, you know, that you get to see. It's I'm sure, you know, you just had a child, right? I'm sure it's the same thing when, ah, things look one way as the kid and another way as the parent. And I think it's the same way with coaching and fighting or promoting and yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. So you've been around, obviously, for a while. What do you think about the state of the women's MMA? Um, honestly, I I'm pretty bummed out about it right now. Um. So there have been some really amazing things, like the fact that so many female fighters are making, I mean, really, what other sport is paying women on par with men mm -hmm. for, like, number of fights, mm -hmm. right, or amount of experience? I, I think it's one of the few where you're getting paid the same, real similar, if not more, publicity sometimes. Uh, however, there's some like upsetting things. Like I, it's really strange to me the way the UFC has seemingly backed away from signing any women with experience. You know, I I don't recall the last time they signed a woman with more than ten fights, and that I think is 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 really problematic because you have the average casual fan watching a woman with four fights and then watching a man with forty and comparing the two side by side, and and they're mistaking things for gender that are actually experienced mm -hmm. and I think that's a problem um that being said I love how there's one FC out here um Bellator Invicta obviously I love Invicta PFL is coming in and there's some actual competition now like million dollar tournaments for women like if you had said that 10 mm -hmm. years ago you know people would be like what you know they wouldn't even believe it so there's some really awesome things but then you know a lot of promoting is sometimes martial arts entertainment and it's not necessarily about the most experience, but, um, for Why example, do you think that they're signing less experienced women, um, marketability, I think probably. And you can't have one or two killers and just feed them the younger fighters. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, probably part of it is they don't want this super gorgeous marketable and and I'm not hating on anyone for using that if you are getting your sponsorship yeah by showing your butt on Instagram all the power to you that's awesome that you're not having to work and you can just fight but they have somebody like that and they don't want her to get knocked off by some gritty vet mm -hmm. and I think that is kind of shaping the women's divisions there right now. Not entirely right, but look at somebody like Antonina's had 50 plus fights before even getting in the UFC. And you see her, she's just head and shoulders above so many people. Like um, the best fight for her, they brought in some brand new fighter who had like six or seven fights mm -hmm. on short notice with Vanessa Porto sitting there. And Vanessa's you know, yeah. 30 some fights. She's fought everybody. She's fought up to 145. Just to kill her, that would have been a great fight. Mm -hmm. But why isn't Vanessa signed? You know, yeah. there's a bunch of them sitting out there. Yeah. Edie Gomes is another one. She's like an 11 and 3 black belt. 
at one forty five. Edie and Gomes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh Pam, for example. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, but they signed that Zared Ferrando Santos, who ducked me in Invicta, hadn't fought for three years, but was six and two and just got knocked out, you know, twice in a row. So it's um it's kind of a bummer because I don't think the UFC is going to be the same thing for women as it is for men if that makes sense yeah I mean I think like you said other promotions are handling women differently so absolutely I don't think that the best women are necessarily in the UFC right and 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 that's that's kind of um and that's okay I'm glad there are other outlets but it is also um a bummer because i think uh like liz carmouche just got cut what the hell happened with that that's what i'm saying i don't even understand wasn't she ranked like four i don't yeah that's what i mean like they're getting rid of the old older like tough grizzled fighters and they don't do that with the men and it's it's super problematic, I think. And I understand they're just trying to market and blah, blah, blah. they feel like that's what gets views, but it's, and that's not to say there aren't real fighters in there because man, there sure are. And I even think the new fighters are real fighters. They just don't have the same experience. You know, it's like, it's not their fault. They don't have it. They just don't have it yet. Um, so Do that's really their lack of knowledge on female fighters or, or interest even I don't know I don't want to I don't know I'm it's not sure speculation obviously but but yeah like the fact that a, a cute three and oh has a higher likelihood of being signed than a 22 and five mm-hmm. pretty tough to make the argument it's the best organization in the world at least not for the ladies it's a weird era because once you know, the UFC started allowing women fighting. Mm-hmm. A lot of women who have had the experience were kind of getting, I don't want to say past their prime, but yeah. They're, but yeah, they're getting there. I think women can compete longer than men with each other, like yep. as they get older, but they're, they're past the peak. They're kind of like coming yep. down from the peak. And then we have all these up and comers who are like been training martial arts for a while or or MMA for a while. So there was like a big gap in experience Mm -hmm. and And maybe there's just not that interest in the older. Well, I think that's it. There's a big gap in experience and they're saying like, what's the better investment? The better investment is not to have, you know, a couple real tough ones, just handing losses to the new marketable ones. Well, but as the overall we effect of that is not good, I don't think. Well, one fight that comes to mind is uh, Roxanne and... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> well put. Is that not amazing? I don't think there's a person on earth who wasn't thrilled about the outcome of that fight. She just... I don't know. I was pumped about that. I love those fights because you don't know how it's going to shake out because. But hell yeah, that fight didn't, you know, did not go the way it was supposed to go, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But that's a great example. That's a great example. And I think that's part of the reason they're not taking a chance on some of these ladies. Mm -hmm. That's great. That was fun. I liked that fight. Mm -hmm. That needed to happen. Yes. They, they like to do that in general, though. It's cool to see, like, the up-and-comers versus, I don't want to say the veterans, oh, they, but... But it is. People that know? they're deciding, should they be there anymore or not, you know? It's interesting, too, because, like you had said, I think women can get away with it longer because it's not testosterone dropping, it's estrogen. Estrogen doesn't make you a better fighter, so it's not that big a deal. It's still yeah. miles, though. Like, shit, think about how many how how many miles. Like, if Roxanne Montefiore was a car how many miles that sucker i mean we'd be at like 250 and still kicking down the road you know <laughs> but she's still she's having the best fights of her career it's cr- she's it was crazy to me that experience mm-hmm. goes a long way well that's a bummer i 
it, it like I said or you said it's exciting that women are there now it's just gonna still take time I think to get to the level where there's that depth like the mm -hmm. 145 pound divisions like no one's in it <laughs> over there well and that's what's tough is Bellator has a pretty good division and I think PFL has taken some because they're just like shit a million dollars I'll eat some pancakes and move up mm -hmm. um so I think that's also spread them out a bit. Yeah. And that makes it difficult. I mean, it's good, but it also makes it difficult. Um, because you have, like, as a matchmaker, then you're looking at, you know, if you're trying to promote a division hard. If you're in the UFC, say you're trying to match Felicia Spencer. Mm -hmm. Say we're going to have her and, and Megan Anderson rematch, whoever. Um, if one of them pulls out, who do you got? You can't put the champ in like a short notice that wouldn't work very well so it's like man like that like putting the matchmakers in those positions because things happen people get hurt people get pregnant stuff mm -hmm. occurs and it's it really is a deterrent for them to push that division then if they don't have if they don't know okay i have these options or i have this person i can say hey so and so is getting an mri on their shoulder well no but can you start getting your weight down just in case they don't have those options it makes it a really risky gamble to put the person not just on a card but like on the main card so i, I think there's um there are a lot of things at play there mm -hmm. like the competition's good it's just we got to fill the divisions to to make it to make the benefits still happen mm -hmm. i suppose okay well Thanks again for coming on. I love talking. Oh, thanks for you. having me. Sorry, I just yapped your ear off. <laughs> no, I, can, I love talking about fighting and especially with uh, someone that enjoys women fighting. Uh, you know, right. I can always talk about that with, or my husband, he's just not as knowledgeable about female sure. fighters. So I could well, go on and on about it. Yeah, when you're not thinking about fighting them too, it's like, I can see. I don't know half the guys for that reason. Like, eh. <laughs> and I only know them because they fight Corey, so. <laughs> right. Okay. Take care. Thank you, and good luck with everything. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks again to Caitlin for coming on the show. It's really nice having a female's perspective. It's hard to get more women just because there's less women doing this, but... I really appreciate her coming on. She has a lot of good insight, and she's been around forever. So thanks again, Caitlin. And for everyone listening, you can go to our Instagram, The First Fight, to stay up to date on all our upcoming episodes. And you can check out our website at firstfightpodcast.com. 